Bible. You live by the word of God. The word of God has a way of giving you compass to navigate your way. If you want the knowledge of God in your life, if you want to increase and grow and multiply the knowledge of God's word in your life, spend time in his word. recommend this book it's a powerful book that just came off the press authored by us um, Greece exploring his riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for Greece and the channels through which God makes Greece available to human beings the ultimate expression of Greece as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God this one will bless you Greece exploring his riches I challenge you check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read study ask questions and apply the truth content to your life. I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26. Let us make man. That's the divine plan. In our image. The details of the plan. And after our likeness and let them have dominion so he was sending man forth to represent god with the nature of god character of god with the likeness of god function functioning like god so the moment man was made man was never meant to be a man in himself by himself for himself man was made on earth to represent the god of heaven let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. So he was sending man to represent him. Let them have dominion. And he said male and female made he them in the day he created them. Then verse 28, and God blessed them. Meaning for the mandate on your life, for you to represent me as I am in heaven, that you may represent me on the earth, you need the enabling to get it done. So God blessed them. You need the power. You need the resources of heaven. You need the light of God to be on your life and on your path to represent me effectively. So God blessed them and said to them. So the saying was the invocation to release the blessing. And God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion. So to fulfill the dominion mandate, man must recognize one, he needs the blessing of the Lord. Two, that blessing came to re in order to be able to represent God. So when a man begins to run his own show like he's in charge, he's disconnecting God even though he has been blessed by the Lord. Let me progress here. Okay, so the purpose of the blessing is so that man can represent God in God's plan. So Adam and Eve is also to represent God in controlling the earth, making it to multiply, making it to bring forth, making it to be replenished. Also, you will see when he called Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, I like to read that as well. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. So a divine initiative showing the details of a divine plan. He said, I will make you a great nation. That's the plan. And to fulfill the plan, it cannot be in Abraham's strength. It cannot be in Abraham's might. Abraham's expertise and experience were not enough. So the next thing, I will bless you. Divine enabling to do well in leading a great nation. Divine enabling to represent God in leading a great nation. Divine enabling in character and in conduct, in nature and in like in function, in character and in conduct to lead a great nation. He said, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. Meaning I will give you the enabling to represent me in leading a great nation. I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. In, you. in you, 
all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Verse 4. So Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken to him. Meaning based on the terms of engagement. Abraham departed in obedience. So I say it again. The primary purpose of the blessing is so that we are able to represent God. So the next time you are saying, God bless me. Don't think it's about yourself. You are simply saying, God, take my life over. So if the blessing you are asking for is about yourself, either of two things may happen. Either you will abuse a divine purpose or you will derail a divine destiny. You abuse a divine purpose in taking a good thing from the Lord and not using it for the purpose of God. Or you derail a divine destiny that the great things God has in mind for you, as you represent him, you truncate it. Hello friends, I want to recommend this book. It's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, Greece Exploring His Riches. Basically, it brings understanding of God's purpose for Greece and the channels through which God makes Greece available to human beings, the ultimate expression of Greece, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. This one will bless you, Grace Exploring His Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions, and apply the truth content to your life. I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. May we walk in the divine plan. May we find our place in God's plan. In the name of Jesus. I said the blessing is not to show off, it's not to brag. I also like to add this. The blessing of the Lord is not to oppress people. <laughs> Sometimes in our humanity, in our carnality, we're thinking, ah, <laughs> some of these people will think they have money in this church. Let me have my own money. They will see what I will do. I will make sure I drive by them in my Range Rover Sports and splash apathy on them. It will shock you. People are, who are speaking in tongues, but they have that in mind. And I will make sure the day I, I splash apathy will be the day he's wearing white. So that I will remember a big man. Because when I was trekking, when I stand on the road, come on to give lift from junction here to ordinance. It will be like, and do like saying, no, see me. Ah, my day will come. God just bless me, you know. I will, I, my own tithe will be 50% in this church, but I must splash that apathy. The blessing of the Lord is to fulfill a divine plan. Is to represent. God does not oppress people. Not even unbelievers. When he talked about the dominion man, go and look at all the people to have dominion, all the things to have dominion over there. Not one unbeliever. Things, creatures, flying in the sea, birds, animals, elements. Not even unbelieving human beings. We are to model Christ to them. Christ died for the ungodly. And every one of us who are in that category, I mean, we were in that category until he found us out of law. So, the blessing of the Lord is not to oppress. Some of us want to oppress family members. Some of us want to oppress friends. Some of us want to oppress old school classmates. Some of us want to oppress enemies. The blessing of the Lord does not qualify us for any of those categories. The blessing of the Lord is not to oppress. Is this clear? Is it clear enough for me to make progress? Okay. Then let me also bring to attention the blessing of the Lord in my study of God's dealings, bringing his blessing upon people. God can bring his blessing, that enabling to do well, to fear well, to excel. He can bring it about in his sovereignty. You didn't pray for it. You are not even looking for him. He was the one looking for you. So, in his sovereignty, nobody earns it. The blessing of the Lord, that enabling to fear well, to do well, to prosper. God can bring it about in his sovereignty. Sovereignty meaning it was all about him. He initiated the process. It's not because anybody earned it. 
It's not because of your hard work. It's not because of your good looks. It's not because of your family background. It is just God at work. Just willing to manifest himself. And when you look at the original prototype of the blessing and man, Genesis chapter, 20, um, chapter 1 from verse 26 to 28 again, there was nothing Abraham, Adam had done or Eve had done. They were not even yet existing when God blessed them. So in that dimension, we are talking about the blessing of the Lord coming out of his sovereignty, not because anybody earned it. Sometimes you even find people who are even doing some wrong things and God decides to call them out of those wrong things and telling them, look, if you just walk with me, I want to bless you. A good case in point being Jacob. Jacob, it, cheat, dubious, fraudster, cheating on his brother. And some of us are worse than Joseph. I mean, worse than Jacob. Well, you see his story in Genesis chapter 28. He was when he was running and landed in Luz, where he had that divine encounter, which he renamed and renamed that place to be Bethel. He was running for his dear life. He had cheated on his brother. His brother had sworn, eh, 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 eh. The moment daddy and mommy dies, I will finish this guy. Did they not rightly name him Jacob? Do you know the meaning of Jacob? Cheat, fraudster. Was he not rightly named Jacob? From birth, he was given to, he had propensity to cheat. And not even cheat outsiders. Cheat his own blood brother. His twin brother. Cheated him of the birthright. Cheated him of the blessing. And showed up before his father. Wore his brother's clothes. Then tried to talk in his brother's voice, put animals hair on his skin in the form of his brother. Even the father said, I hear Jacob's voice, but I feel Jacob, I mean, Esau's body. That's the way many of us are. Some of us, we say, ah, that Jacob, he'll be, he'll be, he'll be a better person. Some of us are worse. I know I'm speaking to people who are watching me on live streaming. I'm not talking to people who are live here. But you know what? God will not even think about all those things he had done to his brother. And God said, the land on which you lie is actually yours. I will bring you back here. I will bless you in this place. When you finish using it, I will hand it over to your children. In fact, I will not leave you until I finish all these things I promised to you. From that place, he went to his uncle's house, who became his boss, who cheated him for 20-something years. Yet, God had in mind, I have blessed this guy, and that blessing must manifest. So, Jacob, a good case in point. In case someone has told you you don't deserve a blessing, tell that person, even, I don't even know why God decided to bless me. Because Jacob is a good case in point. How in God's sovereignty... He will not look at someone's past. He will only choose that this is the kind of future I've designed for this person. If you will walk with me, this is the future I'm bringing him into. He said, I will, I will not leave you. I will go with you and I will bring you back. Go and study that passage. Genesis chapter 28 from verse 10 to about verse um, 18. I, I will not leave you alone. Help me project from verse 15, please. I will not leave you until I have fulfilled. I want to recommend this book. It's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, Grace Exploring His Riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for grace and the channels through which God makes grace available to human beings, the ultimate expression of grace, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. This one will bless you, Grace Exploring His Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions and apply the truth content to your life i can assure you your christian life will move up a notch you will never be the same behold i am with you divine presence and will keep you divine protection wherever you go and we bring you back to this land 
this simple phrase in that sentence was fulfilled almost 30 years after. Remember for 20 something years he labored in Laban's house. Yeah. So, and this was before I got to Laban's house. He said, I will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you divine presence again until I have done divine promise, the blessing, what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. What am I saying to us in here? A good example of God's sovereignty in blessing people. So when you see some people blessed, don't be jealous. Just leave them to God's sovereignty. Leave them to God's plan. Leave them to God's purpose. And work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. One way by which people can come into the blessing of the Lord is just God's sovereign act. And Jacob going, I mean, being a good example, Adam and Eve being a good example, Abraham also. Abraham was not looking for God. God was the one looking for Abraham. Come out of your kindred, your family, your father's house to a place I will show you. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. In you, the families of the earth will be blessed. That was God's sovereign move. But also, I also notice people can also place a demand on the blessing of the Lord for their lives. You can ask for the blessing of the Lord from God directly or from someone who carries divine enabling on his life. You can ask for the blessing of the Lord. Jabez being a good case in point. <laughs> Jabez, his mom named him full of sorrow. Can you imagine you give back to your child? You, we, sometimes we see that thing in abstract terms. But can you imagine even if you went through pain for nine months and then you delivered by CS and your life almost went for it and on the day of naming, you are still in hospital on hospital bed on the day of naming. And they say, what would you like us to name this child? And he said, name him full of sorrow. Will anybody here do that? <laughs> but that was Jabez's circumstance. But when Jabez came to understanding, he started to place a demand on God. I like us to see that. First Chronicles chapter 4, from verse 9. He was full of sorrow. His environment was about sorrow. His experience was about sorrow. Every experience of his life full of sorrow. First Chronicles chapter 4, from verse 9. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain, I gave back to him full of grief and pain and sorrow. And Jabez, rather than turning to an earthly parent, he turned to the source of all blessings. Even when God blesses us by pastor, God is still the source. God blesses us by a prophet, God is still the source. God blesses us by our parents, God is still the source. So rather than turning to human channels, he turned to the source. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou will bless me indeed. Meaning in demonstration and evidently and in operation. Bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. That your hand will be with me and that you will keep me from evil. That I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Before we go on here tonight, I'd like you to look at your own life as we take about tonight. And look at your life. Are you walking in the blessing of the Lord? Are you a carrier of the blessing of the Lord? If you, are, if you see the hand of God on your life, if you are aware that by Jesus at work in your life, you are already in the environment of the blessing. You carry the blessing of the Lord in your life. I'd like you to appreciate him. But if you look at your life and you feel, I don't even see the hand of God in any area of my life. I've confessed Jesus by faith, but I'm not seeing his workings in my life. I'm not seeing any advantage his grace has brought into my life. Not in my intellect, not in my environment, not in my family, not in my finances, not in my health, not in any area. You can also position yourself like Jabez. Jabez was born into a nation that was blessed by God, but he was not seeing that blessing upon his own life. He pressed into God. In case you feel your life is without a blessing, your life is not experiencing any level of the manifestation of the blessing. The blessing of the Lord should manifest materially, socially, spiritually, physically, mentally, biologically, financially. If you are not seeing, you look in every one of those six, seven dimensions, you are not seeing the blessing of the Lord, you can turn to the Lord like Jabez and ask of the blessing of the Lord. 
is able he is the source of all blessings he is the god of all blessings he said blessed be god who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places through christ jesus ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 in case you feel like jabez tonight in a blessed nation christians belong to god's holy nation and yet in such a blessed nation you don't feel the blessing. You don't see the blessing. You don't perceive the blessing. You don't see the working of the blessing in your life. You can also turn to God like Jabez and say, Oh God, that you will bless me indeed. That you will bless me indeed. And enlarge my territory. And keep me that I do not cause pain to anybody. And keep me from evil. I'd like you to talk to the Lord in this moment. If you can see the blessing of the Lord in one area or two areas or three areas of your life, bless his name. And you can also still ask for more. <laughs> again and again, you see God giving Abraham more blessings, more blessings until Abraham became very great. And Isaac also turned to the Lord and God blessed Isaac. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 25, after Abraham's death, God blessed Isaac. Yet in chapter 26, he still blessed Isaac the more. Until Isaac began to prosper, continued prospering, until he became very prosperous. Hello friends, I want to recommend this book. It's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, Grace Explores His Riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for grace and the channels through which God makes grace available to human beings, the ultimate expression of grace, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. This one will bless you. Grace Exploring His Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions and apply the truth content to your life. I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. What a time in God's word today. I'm sure you've been blessed. Your heart has been ignited as you listen to that broadcast today. But I'd like to challenge you beyond being a casual listener, a passive Christian. I want you to become a passionate follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, think on these words you've heard today. And take them to heart. Search the scriptures if these things are so. And live by them. And live for Jesus. God is looking for vehicles. God is looking for vessels. He can fill him with himself and demonstrate himself and release his glory upon the earth today. But will he find you? If God can find you and use you, he will use you to do some things on the face of the earth. He will first of all transform you and then use you to transform a generation, transform the society. I want to challenge you, dear friend and brother and sister, let us live by these words. Let us raise a new generation for our Lord on the face of the earth and the Lord will be pleased thereby. Until another broadcast, remember Jesus, the son of the living God, is coming back again. May we see him. May we follow him. May we worship and serve him. God bless you. Amen. <music>